two of arguably the best superhero films ever made are on Movie Feuds this week. Longtime viewer Drew Trabian is here to fight me to what I assume will be the death. It's no wonder you've put this feud off for so long. To even think that the Avengers would come close to Christopher Nolan's masterpiece is laughable. I know the Dark Knight fangirls are going to be out in full force. If I can't protect the Avengers, I'm damn sure hell going to avenge it. This should be the easiest round for me to win. The entire Marvel lineup has been casted to perfection. I don't know what that is. Characters like Captain America and Thor, who normally I didn't give a shit about, were done so well by Hemsworth and Evans that I ate them up like I always do. That's just the tip of the dick though. Downey's in full form as Iron Man. Scar Joe kicks all sorts of ass. Not Lawrence Fishburne is always welcome as Nick Fury. Hell, even Hawkeye was cooler than he probably should have been. The best part is, those aren't even the main course in this smorgasbord. A lot of meal talking right now. We also get our third iteration of the Hulk, played by Mark Ruffalo. Yes, I know there's been more than three actors in the past to do the Hulk. I'm talking recently, so shut the hell up. Every time the Hulk is on the scene, he steals the show. I mean, I think everybody can agree with that. Janice, you of course agree. She's one of the many interns I have. She's not even there. Glad you mentioned the Hulk. Just one giant plot hole of a character. Why is it that at the beginning of the film he can't control his anger, but at the end, when it's convenient for the plot, he can? There certainly could have been more explanation, but that's just one speed bump in what was otherwise a great family film. You listed a Disney afternoon lineup of characters, but now it's time for the adults to sound off. Dark Knight doesn't just settle for pretty faces. Oh, I know. Maggie Gyllenhaal is in it. It goes for the Academy Award winners, the Oscar-nominated performances that make a good movie great or in this case, a great movie, Flawless. Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, Morgan Freeman, Aaron Eckhart, and Christian Bale. These are not the kind of names you throw around lightly. Christian Bale always transforms into his role, both physically and mentally, and that goes the same for his performance in The Dark Knight. Apparently you're not aware of the overwhelming adoration for Tom Hiddleston's Loki. Maybe he was too low-key for you. Welcome to Movie Feuds, subscribe. Oh, I'm aware. He's potentially the most overrated villain of all time. What does he do exactly that's so awesome? Just giving him magic abilities is such a cop-out. He and Frozen Elsa should join up and make a movie together. It would be called, Shit We Can Do But Is Never Explained. The movie. The arrogance he conveys, the way he carries himself, the constant trickery he bestows upon our heroes is just, I don't know what this is, orgasmic in nature. People were Nick Furious when they heard Ledger was taking the role and many said that Nicholson's Joker would never be top. Then boom, the Dark Knight hits, and we are given the best villain of all time, surpassing even Darth Vader and Hannibal Lecter. And if that wasn't enough, we are given a second breakout performance by Aaron Eckhart as Two-Face. I wasn't aware that Two-Face was in the Dark Knight. His time may have been short but sweet, but the journey to get him there was amazing. The journey was squandered needlessly. This should have been the villain for the third movie. Instead, we got burned. It was actually really awesome. So, my point is mute. Let's get one thing Crystal Pepsi clear. That was a Pepsi brand back in the day. You kids don't know, you're all 12. We are arguing over what is the best superhero film, not just film. You lose in either case. The Dark Knight is an amazing piece of cinema. It's just a piece of cinema that happens to have Batman in it. You actually could have put me in the film, and I don't think anybody would have been any the wiser. In fact, I went ahead and placed myself in a key sequence. Uh, Mitt, you want to roll the clip on that? 50-50. What happened to Rachel wasn't chance. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. What happened to Rachel wasn't chance. The Joker chose me! Uh, duh! You were the best of us. Now fix whatever is happening here and let's move on. Jesus Christ. Gordon, get up! Get Gordon! He's not even looking at me. Let's go. I'm gonna push you off this ledge. This is the Batman movie that we all deserved. And the one that we need right now. I'm so sick of these cookie cutter CGI best films that Marvel keeps creating. It's the same thing every single time. You are correct. Most of the Marvel films are extremely similar. They're all fun. They're all family romps. Everybody can go to the theater and enjoy. Romps is a word I'm using now. 
Dark Knight has plot twists, tough decisions with actual consequences, and people die in this world, and that pain is felt. In the Avengers, people die as well, Drew, and in death one has a name, and that name is Agent Coulson. His name is Agent Coulson. He comes back in this equally stupid TV show, but who cares? Why does Thor not just sit on top of the building and electrocute every f***ing alien that flies through the portal? We see him do it. He stops just because it would be too easy, I guess? Why doesn't Loki mind control Nick Fury? You know, the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Why is Loki even on Earth in the first place? He lists no real reasons except for wanting to be a ruler of a planet that he thinks is super shitty. How is it that Batman can survive a 60-story drop whilst holding one of the ugliest women alive? Only to slam feet first into a car. You're telling me that that bullshit bat cape parachute slowed him down that much? For that matter, what the hell happened to Joker and his goons who were still up in the building? Did they just cash leave? Batman's gone, let's go. We have nothing to do here. Did Batman run into him in the elevator on the way up? It was just like this awkward situation. Oh, hey, Joker. Did you find Harvey Dent up there? Sorry, not sorry. It has giant beasts, awesome hand-to-hand -hand combat, jaw-dropping visuals, great explosions, a giant floating ship, multiple fight sequence with our heroes, intense camera shots that scale sides of buildings and pan around city blocks to keep up with the action. The Dark Knight has a cool motorcycle and a truck flip. Batman keeps things in the world of reality. This isn't Space Jam, it's the Dark Knight. The visuals are there in a much different form. Dramatic lighting, an intense amount of gritty realism you don't really find in superhero films before this. A brilliant use of practical effects that make this film much more engaging. It's not impactful to see a bunch of CGI vomited onto a screen in the Avengers, so the threat isn't real to me. A pencil through the skull though, that's... orgasmic. Dark Knight. No! No! We are going to talk about the music in Avengers. Oh yeah, you're right, there's nothing. I have an army. We have a Hulk. If I had to pick one though that perfectly showcases what I want from a superhero movie, I'd go with the Avengers every single time. It takes me back to a simpler time when I was able to dream, to marvel, pun intended, at superheroes and what they could accomplish. If I wanted to be depressed, I'd go back to work or home and see my family and friends. Or I could watch The Dark Knight and be equally as sad. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is by far the most pointless movie feuds episode that's ever been on YouTube. This is Christopher Nolan we are talking about. The man who gave us Memento, The Prestige, and my favorite movie, Inception. I'll take that any day over Dollhouse and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I feel like you didn't mention the slathering of contributions that Joss Whedon has brought to the table. But I'm going to move on again like I always do, be the bigger person. Now it's your guys' turn. Leave a comment in the comments section below. And remember, as always, this is more than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds. Hey, Drew! Yeah? Get the f*** off my set. He's the number one fan.